Uh, Sam, first of all, can you bring us up to date with what's happening with Cenk Tossen? We hear fees being agreed, he's on his way over. What more can you I tell I think you? it's personal terms is the uh, the final stage. So um, after some long negotiation, we've got to that stage now. So uh, that might happen um, before the cup. Might even be getting registered before the cup if we're lucky. So, But there's a medical and all sorts to go through. So I think that might be very tight. But... Securing the player is the most important thing, obviously, because it's our biggest area, or has been the club's biggest area of concern, um, the number of goals that we're capable of getting. And um, I think that on his track record and on his um, his age and his, uh, his ability, hopefully that will be the case. Are you thinking then, if you do get it done before midday tomorrow, that you could at least take a place on the bench at Anfield? Possibly, but you know, he's, he they finished, didn't they? They, they, you know, they, you know, they, they're quite good because they have a break. You know what I mean? So, um, I think that uh, depends on his overall fitness, and we wouldn't want to, we wouldn't want to risk damaging him just because it's a Liverpool game. In terms of he hasn't trained for a few days, he's he he, he wants this move to happen. There's lots of. Um, mental energy that you burn because of your waiting and hanging can you get the move that you want he's clearly stated that he wants to join us so you wouldn't want to put him on for that game to, and risk an injury but that assessment will come from the medical and fitness staff if we do get that close or we do get that near what has convinced you that he's ready to make an impact in the premier league uh pedigree really i think that um you, you know the the pedigree that he has, um, and what he has shown, the age that he is, uh, we we not got that many players in that elite block of age in our squad, and I think that um, and I think that uh, hopefully he will come to the club and show his his good value for money. Um, so I think that uh, if we get the the transfer done and he is successful by scoring goals for us, it would be. An exceptionally good deal that we've done, but it'll be down to him when he signs on that he can prove us all right. Would you look to add another striker as well, or is he the only one you're looking to bring in in well, this window? If you can tell me where I can get one from, then <laughs> I'll, I might be interested in another striker. Yeah, I mean, cause we've, we've searched high and low uh, for a long time. The, the club before I arrived, uh, as you well know, as everybody well knows, so uh, th this one was. Um, you know, one we've uh, focused on as quickly as we can with the number of strikers that we we looked at since since I arrived, I suppose. There are other players that you're being linked with. Um, midfielder Jean-Michel Serry at, at Nice. Theo Walcott is another name that's been linked as well. I Anything think one, in one at a time. <laughs> you, know, okay. you know, one at a time would be uh, the order of the day. I think that um, we are... Uh, I, I had a weird... A weird um, Message yet yesterday that we're going to allow Yannick Balassi to go on loan, you know, and his agent is wondering why he's heard that. And I think to the agent and to everybody else that sat here and everybody, this is January for you. That speculation creates massive problems for all managers because of the uh, tit for tat that goes on, the whispers, the Chinese whispers that get get rumoured, and uh, it's very. It, disconcerting to particularly a player if he, he hears that message and, and having only got Yannick back after such a long injury period it's lud ludicrous to think <laughs> actually think we're going to lay him on loan but the question was asked by his agent and uh, it can be very disruptive to the players but that's what we have to deal with and you know hopefully by the end of January we'll have uh, we'll have got some uh, business done and uh, we'll be a stronger squad for it I take it then you're happy with the progress Yannick is making then as well because he looked lively against United the other night. Uh, well, I think he's way ahead of where he, sh where he should be. I mean, I think that he shouldn't be starting games yet, uh, but we we need some pace in the side, so we're trying. Um, we're trying to balance off that that problem that we have uh, it, it, that we tr we've got to be able to do the transition from defending well to attacking, and then when attacking, we've got to be able to defend well, and that's what led us down against Manchester United because we were attacking, we attacked more, we had more shots on target against one of the top boys than we did against Liverpool or Chelsea, but then we lost 2-0.
and uh, for me, two boys, two goals that could have been avoided, two great finishes, but could really easily have been avoided up to that. So I've still got, well, I haven't had no time to work on that. That's the problem. So until we get into the end of this month and next month, we won't be able to establish the basics better and improve on that department because we can't get on the coaching field and do the coaching that we want to at the moment. Just with the squad that you've got and possible outgoings, I suppose, obviously Kevin Morales was linked with Olympiacos in the summer. What's likely to happen with him this month, do you feel? Are you looking to move him on? It depends. It depends on many factors. It depends on, one, does Kevin want to go? Two, does he fancy the club that comes in for him? Do we agree with the fee that's being offered? You know, is it right for us? Is it? And then, if it is for us, we ask him. Is it right for him? And then, and then that that transfer may may well occur. And many 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 players in the January. Who, you know, you know who knows. You know, there's, you never never say never to what goes on in the January window when when people are in a position where they want to either move players on or they want they want to strengthen the squad. Like you know, and I think that it's the hardest window to work in. Um, but we're trying at the moment to cure one of the one of the areas where we f feel we have a problem, um, and everybody's been aware of that problem even before I came. And hopefully, this it's a huge pressure on the lad, so I hope he can live with it. Um, we all do, um, and we can't guarantee when you come from abroad you can hit the ground running in January. You saw that obviously with Sandro as well. Seville have been linked with him. Is there any has there been any contact? Anything in that at all? There's been no bids for, for for Sandro at this moment in time. There'll be no loans as far as my recommendation would be. Uh, I don't make the final decision. The decision is made by everybody. Um, but I think that um, personally, if, if anybody's going to leave, it would have to be the, r the right fee for us and we consider we could use that money somewhere else to strengthen our squad. And still the same for Ross, no one? No contact with regards to his future. I would expect there would be in the next, or sometime in this window, if there's if there's going to be any interest from one of the, one of the big boys. Until then, though, available for selection. Possibly is he getting close to that? No, at least? Well, he's back in tra training full time. I mean, this it's a it's a little bit like it's a bit like James and a bit like Yannick, you know, you know when he comes back, you know what I mean. He he's he's. The touch won't be quite as good as it used to be. The match fitness won't be quite as good as it used to be, and we'd have to, with like like James and like Yannick, when, when, if he's the case, when he comes back in, like Seamus, like Leighton, we'll have to suffer that for a while till we get him back up to speed. So, um, I think we've had a stat where we've we've suffered more injuries than anybody else. You know, I think there's a, the, the, we're t unfortunately we're the top of the league for the wrong reason, where. Too many players have missed too many games, and we and we need need to address that one. I can't address it just yet, but eventually I'll address it in terms of our prevention of injury policy. And how are you looking squad wise? Uh, Bainsey, we know, is still still out, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I think that um, from a, a selection point of view, we've probably got looking at what happened on. On the Manchester United game, uh, Michael Keane had to have five or six stitches in his foot, right on the top of the crown of his foot, which I think will be too dangerous to to risk him. Um, but everybody else that's in the squad, I think, is is okay. And um, uh, some rotation has been happening. Sadly for us, it hasn't produced the sort of points that we wanted, but. We have to accept that in this period, if you don't rotate, you can't keep the same time side. And, in, and, and for me, I'd kept the same side building up to Christmas, which was doing doing a great job in getting results and points. But unfortunately, it wouldn't last. And I saw that most at Bournemouth, what you mean, where you know the fatigue kicked in, and we ended up losing in the in the final minutes because of that fatigue. And like I said, Manchester United was okay, but defending wasn't what I expected and we are a team that if you look at the statistics if we are to win a game we need a clean sheet we can win a game without a clean sheet but that would be rare so what importance do you put on the FA Cup for the season 
Well, I think now we're in the position while while the security of the Premier League is always the first priority. I think we're in the position where we we go for it, and uh, it's not a league game. It's there's no points available. It's it's win or bust. Simple as that. It's a cup game. It's different to the Premier League. It's less pressure. Um, it's a glory game, and uh, you can you go out and seek the glory and try and try and win it. If we're to get through, we have to beat Liverpool. Simple as that. So, effectively, a draw is not good enough. Well, Liverpool can set a new unbeaten record against Everton. So, does that come into the thinking as well? well really, no. You know, my my responsibility is trying to get this team winning, and and the, you know the players that. You know, even if they knew that statistic, won't really make any difference to their mentality to go out and try and win anyway. You don't need a statistic like that to want to go out and beat Liverpool. Well, I just wonder if there's that burden of, of history again in this fixture. Um, How that affects the players. I, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think they're professional enough today to to know what the size of the game is and, and make sure they try and deliver the best. And that's what we've got to try and do. When Friday night. When you look at the unusual team. game to play Friday night. <laughs> when you look at the difference between the two clubs, though, I mean, how how would you sum it up? Obviously, Liverpool could go out and spend seventy five million pounds on Van Dijk, yet there's still that speculation that is maintained over Coutinho's future as well. Um. Well, I've only I've only I've only just arrived, so um, my ambitions to. To build the club, will will based on me continuing to get results. That keeps me in the job, and when it keeps me in the job, then I can build the club as big as I think, with the backing of everybody else uh, and the dreams of what the owners have, uh, as 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 big as anything that possibly wants to go to. So there's a number of places we we will. Uh, all work together on and all improve on as a club in total in every area and if we do that we can grow and and get to where we want to go but that can't happen in, in 12 months 18 months two years it's got to be three three two minimum three five year plan to have a sustainability to be as big a club as you want to be and you've seen the looks of Tottenham if you look at Tottenham's history Took them f ten years to get to become an established Premier League f club that gets in the Champions League on a regular basis. So it's not an easy task, and uh, but it can be achieved. But for me, if I'm to achieve it, I have to continue to get results to stay in the job first, and then help the club build to what is what it wants to be. In terms of planning for this game, obviously Jurgen Klopp has rotated quite a bit recent times as well does that make it difficult in terms of planning or do you pretty much know well, what all, to expect we've all had our injuries like everybody suffers at this period of time like I mean you know there's no need there's, there's, there's no need for all the all the uh, coaches from abroad to say what we need because we've been saying it for 15 years um, and certainly I've been saying it the good thing is is they probably got a bigger voice than I have and uh, and they may listen to that, but we do need to shut this this league down after the third round of the FA Cup. I don't. There's any question about that now, and I think that we all know that players need to recover and from from the serious fatigue that they're suffering in this in this period. And from our point of view, rotation out either gets your results and you keep going, and and you say, oh, he's good at rotating, or you rotate and you don't get results, or he's bad at it. You know what I mean? So. That's what we have to face, but you know, here we go. Just one yeah. uh, Sam, I'm just wondering about uh, is there any news on Idrissa Gay's contract? Um, said in October, and as before, it came here that a deal was very close. Have you heard anything? I'm surprised, at all? baffled me. I don't know nothing about that at all. So it's not my department's contracts anyway. So um, if there is a contract being discussed, then I'm sure we'll, we'll get the. Uh, the information to you if and when that contract has been negotiated. Sam. Hi. Just Sorry. Hi, Sam. <laughs> okay. um, you said earlier that you would be maybe expecting contact regards Ross from some clubs in maybe the next few days, week. Does that mean you're resigned to the fact that he will move this month? Uh, I think uh, uh, that we 
we are, and I think the club was resigned before I got here that they were going to lose Ross. So I, I, I can't see that changing. Okay, lads. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers, thanks. Thank you,